All right, linear versus nonlinear relationships. So by the end of today, I'll be able to recognize a nonlinear relationship by its graph, its equation, and its table of values. So let's get started. So let's do a quick refresher here. Determine the first differences and plot the graph. So we've got a table of values here, and I'm just going to grab a purple marker here. And so if I plot these points, so I'm going to start with my usual zero location, so zero, one. There's my first plot, one, negative two, two, negative five, and three, negative eight. And I should see a nice relationship starting there. Let's see if I can draw a decent straight line. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Um, so what is the slope of this relationship? Well, I can do this a couple of different ways. I could draw the triangles on my graph, and let's just change colors so we can see. I can do it right here. Okay, and I can find out the rise and the run. So the rise, now this one's a little tricky because the rise is not going up, it's actually going down. So this is negative three. Okay, the run is in the positive direction. So if you think of these as little arrows, I went down and then to the right, so the run is positive one. So my slope for this graph, if we did rise over run, would be negative three over positive one. If we come over to our table of values, you won't be surprised to see that, oh look, in the first differences, I get those exact same two numbers, where this is the rise and this is the run. And if we check all of the y values, we'll see that they're all negative three, which means this is a linear relationship, which you can see by the graph. So the slope of this relationship is negative three over one. The y-intercept, we can either get that from the graph, which is at zero, positive one, or we can get that from the table, finding where the x value is zero. So we have zero, positive one, that's my y-intercept. What is the equation that relates x and y together? Now this is a little trickier, but you might start to see some connections here. We know that the slope or the multiplier is involved in the equation, so it's going to be y equals negative three x, but we might also recognize that this is not a direct variation, this is a partial variation, again, because this doesn't go through zero, zero. So I know I have to add something, and the adding I'm going to do is I'm going to add that y-intercept value. So if we do a quick check, let's check with this value right here. So if I put a two in, that would be negative three times two plus one. And if we do negative three times two is negative six plus one, I would get the negative five that's associated with x equals two. So my equation looks pretty good. So use a full sentence to describe the relationship. Something along this lines would be good. Uh, again, you can use a whole bunch of different language, but some of the keywords we're trying to get in there are increasing and decreasing. So y decreases as x increases in a partial variation relationship. Something like that communicates, you know exactly what you're talking about, and we can move on. Okay, this one's a little trickier. Uh, if you look at these values, you, immediately you'll see something different in those that table of values. So let's just do a quick first differences here. We'll say from four to one, that's going down by three. From one to zero is going down by one. From zero to one is going up by one, then up by three and then lastly up by five. So right away these are not constant. So we would expect this to be a nonlinear graph. So if I graph these points really quickly, again I'm going to start at zero, zero, one, one, two, four, three, nine, and then I go the other values, and you can see very, very quickly that this is not a straight line. In fact, this is something called a parabola, and this is what you'll do in grade 10. But for now, all we really need to know is that this is nonlinear. And we can see that by the graph. We can see that by the first differences. So uh, if we wanted <coughs> to describe this relationship, 
we could say something like this. This is a nonlinear relationship where the y value is equal to the x value squared. Now you may not be able to see that and that is absolutely okay at this point in time. We'll spend more time on that in grade 10. But if you look here, if you take all of the x values and you square them, you will notice they turn into the y values. So the equation for this guy is y equals x squared. Okay, and that also supports the idea that we don't have a 1 there as our exponent. So another way to spot or recognize a nonlinear relationship. One more, determine the first differences and plot the graph. So again, this looks a little bit more regular, but let's just check our first differences. So 1 to 2, that's an increase of 1. It's an increase of 2, an increase of 4, an increase of 8. Okay, so right away we should see this is nonlinear. Okay, so we have our first differences that are not constant, so this is a nonlinear relationship. If I was to draw this, 0, 1, 1, 2 starts off looking okay, 2, 4 is close, 3, 8, and then 4, 16, something like that, and what we find is this actually goes up like that. And now I haven't put this in our table of values, but I do know what this equation for this graph is. The other side of this graph goes down like that. So it is definitely nonlinear. You do not need to know this shape or the equation for it. If you're curious, this is the equation, and you'll notice that the 2 is the base and the unknown is an exponent, which is something totally different. This is grade 11. So don't panic, you're not going to see anything or do anything like this. All you need to be able to recognize is that it is nonlinear from the graph and from the table of values. If you wanted to try and say a little exp or a sentence for it, this is a nonlinear relationship where y increases as x increases would be about as much as you can say at this point in grade 9. So recognizing nonlinear relations graphically pretty straightforward, uh, no pun intended. The graph does not plot as a straight line. That's key. Number two, the equation. The given equation is not in the direct or partial variation formats. So when we're looking for these types of linear relationships, we're looking for those types of equations. Uh, easy ways to spot that for grade nine is you will look for things like this. As soon as you see an exponent that's not a 1, so either a squared term, a cubed term, or something weird like that, you know it's a nonlinear relationship. Basically, if there's any other symbols in there, you know it's going to be nonlinear in grade 9. Table of values, lastly, the first differences are not constant. Uh, as we move into grade 10, we'll explore things like second differences, etc. Let's do one quick question with some uh, words in it so we can talk a little bit about how the numbers behave. The value of a $30,000 car decreases by 10% every year. Create a table of values for the price of the car for, for three years. So year zero, we know that the car costs $30,000. Okay, now 10% of 30,000 is 3,000. So 10% of 30,000 is $3,000. Now that's how much the car decreases in price. So at the in year 1 the, the price of the car is no longer 37 or 30,000, it's now 27,000. Okay? So now as we move into year 2, we need 10% of 27,000. And that's 2,000. 700. So now we take that off of our 27,000 and we get our new price, which is 24,300. Okay, and then we do that one more time. What is 10% of 24,300? And that is 2,430. So we subtract that from the year two value and we get our new value of $21,870. And if we did a quick check, you would see, let me just change these colors. This is changing by 3,000. 
this is changing by 2,700, this is changing by 2,430, and these are not constant. So this is non-linear. And if you take that away from this question, you've got the idea of what nonlinear relationships are. So last week, some consolidation questions. You can try page 179, a couple of qu questions there to try. Thank you for your time.